I'm Jason Epperson, this is RV Miles, and it's time for this week's RV and Camping News Roundup. We gotta begin with Camping World, the nation's largest RV dealership chain who just announced their 2021 year-end earnings, touting a gross profit margin of 2.5 billion, an increase of 44% over 2020. So yeah, they're not hurting. But it was a different announcement from Camping World that caught my eye. They've apparently entered into a licensing agreement with outdoor retailer brand Eddie Bauer that will have them bringing the Eddie Bauer name to RVs, both trailers and motorhomes. But made by whom? The press release didn't specify. I sure hope they don't plan to make them themselves. I don't even know if they can with the kind of agreements that are made between manufacturers and dealers. They'd have to have a brand partner to build these. And from the few people I've talked with about this, I don't think they've chosen a partner to build these RVs that are supposed to come out in the third quarter of this year. And they were very thorough to say, quote, the product offering will include several models of towable ultralight travel trailers, full-size travel trailers, and mid-profile fifth wheels and A, B, and C motorized units. They also plan to sell a variety of Eddie Bauer branded items in their stores. I'm guessing you'll see Eddie Bauer RV bedding and camping chairs. But look, I don't like to inject a lot of opinion into these newscasts, but this is clearly a half-baked idea. First of all, I'm sorry Eddie Bauer fans, but they are a shell of the company they once were. After a couple of bankruptcies and several changes in ownership over the last 20 years or so, they're now owned by a company called Authentic Brands Group, who hawk everything from Brooks Brothers to Elvis, a lot of brand names that don't have a ton of meaning anymore. And this is at least a third time Camping World has partnered with them. They licensed the Nautica name for things like water skis, wakeboards, and life jackets at their Overton stores, and the Thomasville name for RV furniture. But just look at this photo. I'm pretty sure this is just a Photoshop on top of a Forest River No Boundaries. In fact, it looks like they just ripped this exact photo, which is the first photo that comes up when you Google Nobo. There's even remnants of Nobo's decals in it. And yes, this is the resolution of the rendering Camping World sent out. And why in the world does it say FOMO in the corner? So does this mean it's going to be a Camping World exclusive Eddie Bauer No Boundaries? No way. If so, Forest River would have announced it, and they're definitely not going to do that to their other dealer partners. It seems to me like Camping World CEO Marcus Limonis is one of those guys that would just sign a deal with Eddie Bauer, go back to his team that afternoon and say, make this happen. Then the next day he's wondering where the press release is. Will this be like last year when he announced the deal with electric truck manufacturer Lordstown Motors to build an electric RV? The Lordstown CEO was clearly uncomfortable at the announcement, especially when Limonis was talking about how quickly he thought they could build an electric RV. Steve and I plan to launch the first Class E motorhome in America. If it's up to me, I'd have it tomorrow, but Steve's a little more prudent with his process. But I would hope that by summer, we'll see some prototypes. But I would say that I would hope that a 2022 model would have electrification in it. 2022 model. Now, Lordstown had some financial issues and there's no relationship with Camping World anymore. But you don't just go announce you're going to build an electric RV before the year ends when you've never built an RV before. Lamona seems like one of these bosses that have absolutely no comprehension of what it takes to get a job done. Whatever happens, I'm pretty confident these will likely be mostly entry-level RVs with decals slapped on them and some Eddie Bauer branded throw pillows. And until I see a rendering of one that actually was made by a vehicle designer and know who is actually going to build these, I'm not holding my breath that it will ever happen. All right, back to the news. Yosemite National Park will, after all, require reservations for entry this year. We rounded up all the new National Park entry reservation requirements on a video a few weeks ago, and nothing had been announced yet for Yosemite. A reservation will be required to drive into Yosemite National Park from May 20th through September 30th for those coming in between 6 a.m. and 4 p.m. 70% of the reservations for the whole period will be available on recreation.gov on March 23rd at 8 a.m. Pacific for a $2 fee. I'm guessing recreation.gov is going to be very busy that day, and I'm guessing these are going to go pretty quick. 30% of reservations will be available seven days before 
your arrival date. Reservations are good for three days in the park only and are not required if you have lodging or camping reservations. This episode is sponsored by the Togo RV app, along with their premium suite of apps powered by a RoadPass Pro membership. The Togo RV app is free and offers lots of great features for keeping checklists and maintenance reminders for your RV. But if you upgrade to the RoadPass Pro membership, you unlock turn-by-turn -turn GPS navigation that takes into account the size of your RV and you get tons of discounts. But then you also get membership at Road Trippers for trip planning, Campendium for searching campgrounds, and R Village, the RVer social network. Get $10 off Road Pass Pro with the code RVMILES10X. Ford is recalling nearly a quarter million heavy duty trucks in the US, probably including ours. The heat and noise insulators below the body can loosen and touch the drive shaft, which can cause it to fracture. The recall covers gas powered F-250 and F-350 Super Duty pickups from the 2017 through 2022 model years. Dealers will inspect the drive shafts and repair them if necessary and properly attach the insulators. Owners will be notified by letter starting April 4th, but you should probably, you know, take a peek under your truck. California-based truck camper and travel trailer brand Lance is expanding, building a plant in Decatur, Indiana, about 90 miles from RV capital of the world, Elkhart. Production should begin this summer on Lance's well-respected RVs. Lance pointed to the growing demand for their travel trailers as the prime reason for the expansion and a desire to better serve the eastern half of North America. So you'll see Lance trailers on RV lots across the east very soon. The new RV Today magazine has officially launched. You may recall we shared the news of their preview issue last fall. It comes from the folks at Rootless Living magazine and is full of the people, places, and products that make RV travel more enjoyable. Unlike another big RV magazine, it's not owned by anyone in the RV industry, so it's a truly independent publication by RVers for RVers. It's available in both print and digital formats, and there's a link in the description for this episode. Finally, I wanna give a shout out to our friend Joshua Sheehan, who you can find on the Gander Flight YouTube channel. Joshua is the new host of the RV Entrepreneur podcast, which has been a fan favorite for a long time, formerly hosted by Heath Paget. RV Entrepreneur helps digital nomad type folks learn about running a business from anywhere. And this week's episode features Abby and me, and you can find it on any podcast app. That's it for this week's news. Let us know your thoughts and opinions by leaving a comment below and please hit the subscribe button for more videos like these. And remember, likes are free and they help a lot. Here's last week's news video if you missed it and here's a great video that you haven't checked out yet. We'll see you next time.